hello everybody. I hope you're keeping as well as can be under the circumstances. We're now into week two of online courses and I know that it's difficult to stay organized and difficult to stay focused. I know that because it's difficult for me, but uh, we'll, we'll do the best that we can. And I thought, um, well, we want to pick up where I left off in the last short video, which was talking about Aristotle's distinction between matter and form. Uh, and talk about a closely related distinction, the distinction between potentiality and actuality. And the reason that we want to look at this, uh, at this particular moment, is because it's absolutely central to Aristotle's account of the soul and the dianima. And the dianima, in turn, is uh, foundational or fundamental on, on the view I accept to Aristotle's ethics. So we, we want to try, ultimately, to make sense of Aristotle's definition of soul. He defines the soul in De Anima book, um, book 2, chapter 1. He defines the soul as the form and first actuality of a body that is potentially alive. The soul is the form and first actuality of a body that is potentially alive. So like the distinction between um, form and matter, this distinction applies all across Aristotle's philosophy. He, he, uh, he applies it in his... Uh, metaphysics, um, he applies it in his uh, 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 physics to make sense of various puzzles, for example, to make sense of change. Uh, he applies it in um, his biology. He characterizes God as a kind of pure actuality. That's a famous characterization of God that Aristotle offers. So we want to try to understand, understand that. Um, there's also a close relationship between this distinction and the distinction between uh, form and matter. Actuality corresponds to form. And, and potentiality corresponds to matter. And in fact, he sometimes analyzes the distinction between form and matter in terms of the distinction between actuality and potentiality. So in the physics, he says that, that matter is that which exists in potentiality, and, and form is that the presence of which, form is that whose presence, makes what exists in potentiality to exist in actuality. So Aristotle means that it's the presence of form in matter that makes matter um, into particular things. Uh, if you have a compound of form and matter, um, uh, form answers to actuality, and matter answers to, um, to potentiality. Now, it's not as though we ever encounter uninformed matter. Whenever we uh, uh, grasp matter with our senses, there's a form present in it. Um, but you can still think of the two aspects of, um, of a hylomorphic compound as answering to, to this distinction. So it's absolutely fundamental. And another thing to keep in mind is that it's distinct from a, a related, uh, it's distinct from a related distinction. Aristotle's distinction between potentiality and actuality is distinct from a distinction that contemporary philosophers often draw between possibility and actuality. So uh, contemporary philosophers often talk about um, logical or conceptual possibility. They sometimes talk about metaphysical possibility. They might talk about practical possibility. But in, in each case, possibility there is not uh, exactly what Aristotle means by potentiality or, or dunamis. Uh, potentiality is, is a capacity. It's a capacity that belongs to a particular kind of thing. And in fact, Aristotle thinks that there's a close connection between, um, especially in the case of living organisms, between the kind of thing, thing that something is and the capacities that it has. The soul turns out uh, to be a set of capacities that, um, that constitute the life of an organism. So uh, potentiality is, is narrower in that sense than bare possibility. There are many, many unrealized possibilities. There's the un unfortunately, there's the unrealized possibility that you all be present uh, on the Colgate campus. That's an unrealized possibility. But po that possibility is not a capacity in any sense. So capacity is, is not the same as, as possibility. So that's the second point to, to be clear on. Uh, another point, it's a tricky one, is that actuality, as Aristotle means it, can be a further potentiality. So, so this is tricky. Uh, Aristotle speaks not only of potentiality and actuality, he also speaks of first and second potentiality and first and second actuality. So those are tricky, that's a tricky uh, set of terms. Um, but what that means is that it, certain kinds of things can, can be characterized both as a potentiality and as an actuality. Uh, so, to take a simple example, um, if you have the ability to speak a language, uh, if you can speak French, for example, that ability is itself a kind of potentiality. It, it's an ability, right? If you have the capacity, you have the potentiality, and then when you begin to speak the language that you're able to speak, you're now actualizing that capacity. But that ability is also the actualization of a prior 
kind of capacity. So maybe you don't speak French, you don't speak a foreign language, but you have the capacity to learn to speak it. That uh, more basic capacity, Aristotle would characterize as a first potentiality. So your, your ability, if you, if you don't know French, your ability to learn French is, is a potentiality. When you learn French, you, 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 you actualize or realize that potentiality, and you now have what Aristotle calls a first actuality, the ability to speak French. Um, now that first actuality is also an ability which we could characterize as the second potentiality, and the second potentiality is actualized when uh, you begin to speak French. So if you characterize uh, the capacity, you can say, I can speak French. And then um, if you actualize that capacity, if you say, uh, je suis en train de parler français, I'm speaking French, you move from the level of second potentiality slash first actuality uh, to a new kind of actualization, which Aristotle calls a second actuality. So actuality and potentiality are co-relative. They're co-relative notions for Aristotle in about the way that uh, species and, and genus, or genus and species, are co-relative notions for Aristotle. Whether we're speaking of something like your capacity to speak French, whether we're characterizing something like your capacity to speak French as an actuality or a potentiality is going to depend on whether we're thinking of it or talking about it in relationship to the capacity that's below it, the potentiality that's below it, or to the actuality that's, that's above it. So the, the ability is a kind of capacity in relationship to this further actuality. But it's an actualization in relationship to this more basic capacity or potentiality. So we're going to keep those, uh, those terms uh, straight, and then we want to look next at what Aristotle means when he applies this distinction in the De Anima, and he says that the soul, the soul of a living thing, is the form and first actuality of a body that has life potentially.